The king of the cowboys, Roy Rogers. Brought to you by Quaker Oats, the giant of the cereals. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Out of the West and into your home, riding the range of mystery and adventure, blazing the trail of Western story and song, Troy Willing and the writers of the Purple Sage, that teller of tall tales, Gaffy Hayes, the Queen of the West, Dale Evans, and in person, the King of the Cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. So howdy, folks. This is Roy Rogers. You know, sometimes a cowboy has to go the long way around to protect his cattle. And that's exactly what happened last week in Paradise Valley. Gabby, how about you telling our pals the story? Why, sure, Roy. We tickled to help you out. Wranglers, I wish you'd been along last week to see the kind of shooting my pal Roy done. I tell you, it made me proud to point him out and say, now there's a fella that I learned. Yes, sir, he done some right smart shooting. Well, we call this story the plot against the bank. And it started on Roy's Double R Bar Ranch down Paradise Valley. Roy and me was looking over the cattle. Easy, Trigger. He's happy. That heifer with the star on her face, uh, she doesn't belong to us, does she? Where about? They're at the edge of the herd. Why, sure enough. Carrying John Pickens' brand, ain't she? Well, John won't ever know the difference. <laughs> what are you doing, Gabby? Tempting me to be a cattle thief? Well, now, son, that heifer's probably been eating our grass all summer. No, sir, she's John Pickens. And John needs every heifer he can get. He's had hard going since he took over that ranch he operates. Boy, boy. Listen. <clears throat> Sounds like a woman, son. Hello, Dale. Clear out here among the cows. Wait for me. Son, why don't you grow a beard like mine? They let you alone then. Maybe. Boy, I was going to leave the town and take the paper I heard of yearlings to the bank when Bill Lang rode up. Oh, say, you better catch your breath, Dale. How is old Bill, Dale? He growed horns and haired over yet. Bill told me not to put the check in our bank, Roy. He said our bank was broke. Might not open its doors tomorrow. What? He's calling on all his friends and telling them so they can get their money out in time. Hmm. If a man wanted the bank to go broke, he couldn't go at it in a better way. What do you mean, son? Well, if enough people demand their money at one time, a bank might run short of cash and not be able to pay some of them off. Why, when I gave Mr. McPhail my $3.40, he told me I'd get it back any time I wanted it. Sure, but the bank loans out some of the money people deposit so folks can buy ranches and homes and things they want. Of course. If everybody demands their money at once, the bank just won't have enough cash on hand to pay them. And maybe the only way it could get cash would be to take the homes of the people who buy the money. Now, that sure would make the birds stop singing. Gabby, when you take this heifer back over to Jack Pickens tonight, I think I'll ride along with you, stop off and see Bill. I imagine he'll be able to tell us who or what's behind all these rumors. took your own money out of the bank, Bill? Yesterday, and if you're smart, Rogers, you'll be first in line tomorrow morning to do the same thing. Frankly, I think I'll let my money stay right where it is, unless I get something more reliable to go on. Are you saying my word isn't reliable, Rogers? I'm saying you haven't given me any real evidence that the bank is shaking. Wait a minute, Rogers. Are you practically calling me a liar? I'm not calling you anything. I'm just saying we haven't got one single thing to go on except rumors. And I'd like to trace down and find out who started well, Don't look at me. I didn't start him. Get out, Rogers. Get out of here. All right, Bill. But I have an idea you and I will meet again before this matter is finally settled. I can find out, son. Nothing I can put my finger on. How about you? Well, John Pickens didn't seem to know anything about the bank being shaky. But I met a couple other fellas on the trail, and they heard the same thing Dale did. How'd they hear it? Same way Dale heard it. Bill told them. Confidential like. He did, eh? Mm -hmm. Pappy, if this rumor keeps growing, trouble is really going to start. 
Everybody in Paradise Valley will be at the bank in Mineral City, wanting to draw out their money. Well, them fellers I met said they'd be on hand when the bank opened. Said they was going to get their money while the getting was good. Maybe you and I better be there, too. Oh, shucks, on my $3.40, ain't it? <laughs> we'll take the riders with us, and Dale, too. Then if trouble does start, we'll be ready. That's a good idea. I'll have my shooting irons ready. I think one man's behind this whole thing. I don't know why he wants the bank to fail, but it looks like he does, and we got to find a way of stopping him, and quick. That crowd, boy. Just like you said, son. Everybody in the territory is there, waiting for the bank to open. You riders better take your places. Sure, boy. You want me up front, boy? Yeah, Dale. And let's make it look as though we're coming into town on some kind of a celebration. Might be a good idea to sing something and get their minds off of the bank. Try to keep the crowd listening long enough so I can go into the bank and see Mr. McFay. Hey, look. Boy Rogers and the riders from the double R bar. Ready for about the bank, too. Get ready, boys. Dale. You bet we've heard about the bank, and we're going to try to do something about it. But just so nobody flies off the handle too soon, let's have a good time while we're waiting for the bank to open. Fine. I got Dale and the riders with me. How'd you like to hear a song? Do your best, Dale. Okay. Act like it was a celebration. I'll stay with you as long as I can, then I'll ride around to the back, go in and see if I can see Mr. McPhail that way. We're going to have a cowgirl polka, so you better curl up your hair. Better paint your lips and cheeks, too, because the cowboys will be there. We're going to have some western music and a great big barbecue. You better wear some furs that jingle, so the boys will look at you. And when you choose yourself a partner, be a Tim or Jack. Yourself light as a feather when you do the heel and toe. There'll be some dancing and romancing when the moon is full and bright. Don't forget the cowgirl polka at the double R bar tonight. Hey, yeah. You and the boys are on your own now. I'll cut out and go see Mr. McPhail. Okay, boy. Good luck. Don't, Don't forget, forget the cowgirl polka at the double R bar tonight. Who, who? Right here, Trigger. You wait for me. Mr. McPhail? Mr. McPhail, it's me, Roy Rogers. Rogers, what are you doing? I'm not here to make trouble, Mr. McPhail. I'm here to help. Come in, quick. Mr. McPhail, I want the honest truth. Can this bank pay out all the depositors' money? This bank's as good as sweet, Roy. If I'd found out about the rumor sooner, I could have paid every depositor every cent he had coming. The bank at Broken Arrow would give us enough cash to stave off any run, but that's out of the question now. Why? Well, it's an all-day ride to Broken Arrow, Roy. You give me a letter to the bank there, and I'll go for the money. No, we're too late. The crowd's outside now. I'll explain to the crowd. I'll tell them the bank won't be able to open up until the day after tomorrow. Well, all right, Roy. Go out, do the explaining. I'll write a letter to Broken Arrow. <laughs> now you're talking. And as soon as this thing's over, I promise I'll give my full time to seeing who started the rumor against you and the bank and what their reason is. Broken Arrow right away. I'll explain why to the crowd. While we're going, I want you to keep a sharp eye on Mr. McPhail. On Mr. McPhail? Oh, I think he's all right. In fact, I'm sure he is. But I have to ask the folks to agree to closing the bank until day after tomorrow. That will give McPhail a perfect chance to get away if he wants to. Roy, McPhail is honest. But if he isn't, if he does anything that looks suspicious, you hit the trail for Broken Arrow. Ride right as hard as you can until you find Gabby and me. <laughs> the way the week started from a partner, Roy and me. Before the day come around, we'd had more excitement than a bear breaking into a hive of bees. Tell you more about it as soon as we hold a meeting with another good friend of ours. The, the giant of the cereal is Quaker Oats. The giant 
of the cereal is way girl. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereal is way girl. You know, most everybody has a secret ambition down at the bottom of his or her heart. Some favorite sport or project they want to make good at in a great big way. Well, it can make a big difference what kind of breakfast you eat. Your best bet is a good Quaker Oats breakfast. Because Quaker Oats helps grow the stars of the future. Yes, doctors say the more often youngsters eat a good oatmeal breakfast, the better they grow. That's because a recent survey shows only one school child in five gets the kind of a breakfast he should have. There's more growth, more endurance for you ambitious youngsters in nourishing oatmeal than any other whole grain cereal. There's more energy, more stamina for hardworking grown-ups in nourishing oatmeal than any other whole grain cereal. Yet for all these benefits, Quaker Oats still cost less than a penny a serving. Yes, still cost less than a penny a serving. Order delicious Quaker Oats from your grocer tomorrow. A giant in nutrition, in value, in flavor. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereal is Quaker Oats. You wranglers pay close attention now. Before we're through, you're going to witness some fine and fancy shooting done by my partner, Roy Rogers. Roy and me had our suspicions about the trouble of the bank, but we paid no mind to them because it was more important right then to ride over to the broken air and get the money. Well, we got it without any fuss. Fuss started when we was on our way back. I wouldn't have insisted on bedding down here, Gab, except that... I know a man your age can't stand right all night. Hold your jaw, you young whippersnapper. I can get up there right now and ride the heels off you. <laughs> I believe you'd do it too, yeah, Babby. Ain't right I would, man of my age. <laughs> well, we've done enough riding for today anyway. We're sure of getting back in time, and that's what matters. Uh-huh. Nobody will be happier than when we ride in with all this money than John Pickens. Why John Pickens? Well, when I was giving him the white-faced heifer and kind of feeling him out to see if he knowed about the bank being shaky, he was telling me how he'd saved enough to pay off the mortgage on his place. Oh? Due tomorrow. His money's sitting right there in the bank. He can't get it unless the bank opens. With the mortgage paid off, though, John will have one of the best outfits in the valley. Most anybody would like to own it. Especially the feller that owns the mortgage, from what John says. Wait a minute. Somebody's out there. Gabby, I'll slip around and see if I can get it behind them. If they're looking for trouble, we'll give it to them. All right. All right in there. We got you covered. Yeah, don't move. You feller, you, you, you speaking to me? To you and your partner. Oh, I reckon you were making a mistake, mister. I'm by myself. Where'd your partner go? He ain't got no partner. I'm a lone prospector. Well, you know you got a partner. Where is he? Hey, wait! Uh, I got him, Gabby! I looked one up. You're shooting there, son. The other fellow's getting away. No, oh, Gabby. Oh, hold him right there, son. Right there. Gabby. Tight now. Oh, and I'll touch now. up his chin Let just a little mite. That's it now. Steady Let now. Me. I want to take a true aim. <laughs> well, what do you know, Roy? I've done it. I've done it. I cooled him off like a mosquito on a cake ice. This might be more than just a simple holdup. Some mighty strange things been going on about that bank. I reckon we'll stay right where we are for the rest of the night. Gabby, we wouldn't want anybody to find us out on an open trail where we couldn't defend ourselves. But I tell you, I don't know who my partner was. We met in town, he told about you carrying the money, and we decided to get it. That's time on his horse, Gabby. We'll start, we'll start back. Huh, a likely story. Figure, come on, boy. We're heading for home. <laughs> That's it, fella. Wait a minute, son. Ain't that Dale riding along the trail ahead? Yeah, it looks like her. Well, she was to come for us if Mr. McPhail acted suspicious, remember? <laughs> hey, Dale! What's wrong? McPhail? Run away? Yes. Bill Lang helped him. I was watching like you told me. And early this morning, Bill and one of his men went to McPhail's house. They went in, got Mr. McPhail, and the three of them rode away together. Well, something is wrong with the bank after all, I guess. 
Tony, I can't imagine McPhail and Bill in on a deal together. I came as fast as I could, Roy. That means the bank won't open. Oh, who is he? Oh, just a varmint that tried to hold Roy and me up. <laughs> I had something jolly in my toy shop. Does that mean the bank won't open? I'm afraid it does. Then Bill Langdon will cross us. He hired us to get you, Roger. Hired you? Yeah. Bill Lang said there'd be $500 deposited in the bank for each of us. My partner and me, we could keep you from getting home for two days. So that's it. Uh-huh. We weren't to touch the money you were carrying. Our job was just to keep you from getting back with it for two days. But if he's double-crossed us, then I'm... Tighten your sense, Gabby. We're riding into town. Now we know what we're looking for. Son, up ahead. There's a sight that's going to make you want to cry. The people. You told them you'd be back with the money. They're at the bank waiting for you. Yeah, they trusted me, and now the bank can't... We got it, but... We got it, but... It's going to be hard to tell them. Folks! Folks, just a minute. Miss Dale, I thought you said Bill had gone away with McPhail. I did. Hold it a minute, folks. Well, well, there he is on the edge of the crowd. Son, Bill Lang is here. Go get him, Gabby. Bring him here. It's a pleasure. Peaceable or otherwise, but bring him in. Uh, all right, folks. I want to tell you what happened. Uh, you told us enough already, Roy. As long as you got the money with you. Yeah. Oh, Roy, I, I guess you're getting back on time means more to me than anybody else in town. Hi, hey, John. You know Dale. Uh, John Pickens. Sure. How are you? Oh, well, we're neighbors. You know, Roy, the mortgage on my place is due today. The money for it's in the bank. If that bank hadn't opened up... I just lost the whole work. Well, here's your friend, son. William Thomas Lang in person. Roger, I see you saved the day for us ranchers. I reckon you've got a little explaining to do, Bill. And I'm going to ask you to do it in front of all these folks. Oh, well, I'd be glad to explain anything at all. All right, try this then. Where's the 500 you promised Vincent Hutton to me? Yeah, what's that? Who's this man? Well, he says you promised to pay him if he kept us from getting back on time. Well, uh, I never saw that man before in my life. Ah, you're lying. Uh, I'll leave it to my friends. Now, you've known me for years. I may have been sharp in business, but have you ever seen me do a really dishonest thing? <laughs> there, there, you see. My word against his. Mine ought to carry more weight in this territory. You did, Irish. I know you did. One thing more, Bill. Where is Mr. McPhail? Why, why, isn't he here? Dale said you and one of your riders went to Mr. McPhail's house early this morning and rode away with him. That is an outrageous lie. Don't call Dale a liar, not in front of me. Oh, well, well my dear, you, you must be mistaken. No, I am not mistaken. I just now came to my ranch. It couldn't have been me you saw. No. Well, now, is there anything else, Roger? Nothing right now. But I'm terribly sorry that McPhail has absconded, Roger. That means the bank can't open, despite your brave that Bill. Just a minute. Oh, yes, John, yes, yes. Something I can do for you? Roy, Bill holds the mortgage on my place. So you're the man, Bill. Yes, Roger, that's correct. And the mortgage is due today. So, John, my boy, if the bank doesn't open, you won't be able to pay me, will you? Things are beginning to add up. Oh, yes, that's too bad. You've got one of the best outfits in the country. And you've worked mighty hard. Bill? John's going to pay you off right now. Hey, where where, where did he get the money? I've got it right here. You can't touch that money, Rogers. It, it belongs to the bank. I'll borrow enough so John can pay you off. These folks will witness the whole transaction. I will not accept that money. That isn't legal. You'd better accept it. If you don't, the folks are witnesses to the fact you refused it. And that ends your claim for all time. <laughs> I'll get you for this, Rogers. I'll get you for this. For the very last thing I do. Oh, boy. I don't know how to thank you. You men with horses, we're organizing right now to look for Mr. McPhail. Gather out in every direction. We can't open the bank until we find him. Let's search every inch of this valley. <laughs> Meet me at my place at noon to report and have a big speed. All right, let's go. Barbecue here. We didn't find McPhail this morning, but we will this afternoon. Oh, well, I got him. I found McPhail. Well, Pappy. <laughs> Wait a head, you vomit, and don't look to the right or left. Say, Pappy, how'd you do it? He was in that old miner shack on Diamond W, pretending to be tied hand and foot. Bill Lang. Where's Bill Lang? Hey, you'd better sit down, Mr. McPhail. 
You're all in. Yes. Uh, Pretending, that's all. Bill Lang and, and one of his riders came to my house early this morning. They told me you were back. They took me to the edge of town, and then somebody jumped us. I was knocked out, but only for a minute. I could hear them talking. I could tell from what they said, Bill had engineered the whole scheme. Bill? Yeah. Yeah, they were, they were talking about you, Roy. How Bill had sent some of his riders to delay you. And how you'd caught one, but the others escaped and gotten back to tell him. Bill was trying to keep you from getting back on time, Roy. I don't know why, but when he found he couldn't, he tried to keep me from getting to the bank today. He didn't want the bank to open today. Oh. Mr. McPhail, you just made everything add up right nice and quick. Well, I, I, I don't seem to understand. Well, Bill Lang wanted to take over John Pickens' ranch. John had to pay off the mortgage today, and all of his money was in the bank. By golly, son, that's it. If the bank was closed, even for today, John wouldn't be able to pay off in time, and Bill had got one of the most valuable outfits around here. For practically nothing. Roy, Roy, quick! John, what is it? Bill Lang. Bill and one of his men, they've driven a wagon load of black powder up on a hill above your lake. And yeah, they lit a long fuse now. They're letting the wagon down the side of the hill with rope. They want to blow up the dam, flood down. I'll get the right. Get out by the gate, Roy. You can see it plain. What are you going to do? We've got to explode that powder before it gets to the dam. Hold to it, son. Quiet now, everybody. Quiet. Please. Aim good, son. Oh, missed. Careful this time now, son. Careful. Boy, come in. John, are Bill and his riders still around that hill? Well, sure, they were lowering the wagon with a rope. All right, let's go get it. We've got to get him, boy. Run your heart out, big boy. We've got to get him. You know, millions of people turn out to see Roy Rogers every year in his Republic feature pictures and in Roy's own rodeo show. They whistle and cheer and love the rootin' tootin' he-man way Roy races Trigger headlong through a scene. Yep, Roy's a real star. Now, here's a tip to you fellas and girls. Here it is in Roy Rogers' own words. Roy says, my folks brought me up on Quaker Oats. Yes, sir, that's straight from Roy Rogers to you. So you fellas and girls, let good nourishing breakfasts of Quaker Oats help you become the stars of the future. Because doctors say the more often youngsters eat a good oatmeal breakfast, the better they grow. So you put a bee in mom's bonnet to cook up a quick nourishing breakfast of delicious Quaker Oats tomorrow morning. Reminder to buy Quaker Oats. A giant in nutrition, in value, and flavor. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereal is Quaker Oats. Well, the way I figure, Bill Lang bit off more than he could chew when he started the rumor. He sure did. It might have worked, though. The simple rumor, a run on the bank, and the bank closing for a couple of days. He might have gotten John's ranch that way if other things hadn't happened. Such as me giving a hold-up man that awful shellacking. <laughs> right, Gabby. <laughs> and then me going out and locating McPhail when nobody else could. <laughs> yes, sir, Gabby, you did right well today. I'm mighty proud to have you as my partner. Oh, shucks. <laughs> and, Dale, you did right well, too. Coming for us and a little while ago fixing dinner for the men. I'm mighty proud to have you as my neighbor. Thank you, Roy. I sure waded into that hold-up man, didn't I, son? Punched him up one side and down the t'other. <laughs> Tell me honest now, son. Did you ever see such a fight as that in all your life? Never, Gabby. I never did. I told you you'd witness some mighty fine shooting, didn't I? Yes, sir, and I learned my partner Roy all he knows about guns. Well, as long as everybody's here now, Roy, Dale, the writers of the Purple Sage, we thought maybe you'd enjoy a little of our kind of music. Of course, I don't claim to have learned them this, but I coached them just a little mite. Shades 
of night are fallen as the winds begin to sigh and the world is still a for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you, from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Don't forget how the May out of the sunshine and the frown from a rainy day. Quaker Oaks, the giant of the cereals, presents the Roy Rogers Show each week at this same hour. With the writers of the Purple Sage, Day 11, Gabby Hayes, and the king of the cowboys himself, Republic Pictures' great star in person, Roy Rogers. Can you still get some of those light and luscious golden brown Aunt Jemima pancakes for Sunday supper? Can you? <laughs> Why, sure. Just add milk or water to my Aunt Jemima pancake ready mix and pop them on the griddle. Mmm, scrumptious. Enjoy an easy fix in Aunt Jemima pancake supper tonight. Republic's latest Roy Rogers picture is Nighttime in Nevada. This is Art Ballinger speaking for Quaker Oats, the giant of the cereals. Thank <laughs> you.